My daughter, Roxy, is a painter. She loves to paint. There's paintings all over our house that she's done. And, and uh, from when she was very young and first starting out that were very simple to, to now that she's getting older that are getting much more elaborate and uh, much more detailed. And it's fun to watch her, her grow in this, in this gift and this talent. Um, and often as she's painting, um, I'll see her working on one. And I'll come up to her and I'll say, hey, is this one, is it finished? And she'll either say, no, it's not finished or yeah, it's finished or, you know, I'm still working on it or whatever. But you know, it's interesting. There's that moment in time in which, you know, it's almost done, but it's not quite. But then there's that moment when she steps back and she says, it's finished, it's done. You know, as I was reading through John chapter 19, uh, where we're at this week, there's uh, uh, a very, very short uh, uh, phrase that Jesus utters that I want to uh, draw your attention today as you're reading through John chapter 19 this week. And uh, hopefully as you do, also bear in mind this, you know, sometimes uh, we only get into studies and uh, uh, reflecting upon the crucifixion of Christ around Easter time. You know, that one time a year where we really dive into it and look at exactly what Jesus did and what he accomplished for us on the cross. Um, and that's kind of unfortunate in many ways. If you stop and you think about, you know, what he did for you and for me was he died for us. He gave up his life. And as we read into it even more so, even more so than the physical death, he allowed himself his relationship to his heavenly father to be separated because of sin for us so that we would never have to experience that for ourselves if we would choose to believe in. So, you know, in some ways it's kind of unfortunate that we only read about the crucifixion or study it sometimes around the Easter holidays. Um, so hopefully as you're getting into it, uh, as we're reading through John uh, this week, uh, I hope you'll, you know, really take the time and study it. But here's the phrase that I want you to take notice of. It's John chapter 19, and it's in verse 30, okay? And this is after Jesus has been hanging on the cross for a good while now. It said this in verse 30, When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, in other words, the, the, the mixture that they had given him, he says these words, It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost or his spirit, or in other words, he died. It says in John chapter 19, right there in that verse, it says that Jesus's final words were this, it is finished. So what does that mean? Just like with my daughter's painting, there's a work that's ongoing and ongoing and ongoing. But eventually, as she works on that painting and she, and she develops it, it finally does come to a point in time where there's nothing else she can do, either because she loves it just the way it is or it's what she envisioned from the beginning and there's nothing else to be added to it. But the bottom line is this. It is finished. See, folks, when Jesus hung on the cross and when he died for us, he accomplished God's will for his life. He accomplished the purpose for which he was come, for which he had come, and that was to die for you and me and for all those who would believe upon him. His work was done. His painting, so to say, was completed. And not only that, he wanted us to know. He wanted the world to know. He wanted all of heaven to know, and he wanted all of darkness to know that at that very moment, as he died, everything that he was called to do is finished. It is done. And all that is left is for you and I to make the choice ourselves, the simple choice, will we believe in the work that he accomplished? And do we trust in the fact that everything that God would ever require of us, Jesus accomplished. Everything that God would ever expect of us or demand of us because of our sin, Jesus accomplished for us. 
And as he said on the cross, it is finished. That, everyone, is really, really good news. And as we'll see as we continue to read through John, the reason we know that indeed he finished and accomplished everything that God had called him to do is that God will raise him from the dead. He'll never taste death. And he is eternally at the right hand of the Father till he returns to gather up those that are still alive in that final day. It's finished. It's finished. There's nothing you and I can do. There's nothing we can add to it. The master painting is complete. It's all done. It's finished. All we have to do is believe in what he has done. Father, we thank you that upon the cross, Jesus paid the ultimate and final price for our sins. That it's all done. There's nothing left for him to do but return one day. There's no other works that we need to do. There's nothing we can add to the painting. Not of our good works or anything else. The only thing we can do is believe in what he did. To trust the painting that he painted. What he accomplished, Lord. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Jesus' final words as he uttered on the cross was good news to all of us that there's nothing left to be done. It is finished. So Lord, help us to get our hearts and our minds around that truth, to embrace it, to receive it, to rest in it, to relax in it, to wholeheartedly believe in it, that it is finished. It is all done for us. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all that Jesus has done. And we pray all these things in his name. God bless. Folks, listen. Um, if you got anything else from this uh, uh, chapter of uh, John, John chapter 19, uh, share it in the comments. As always, it's good to hear from others as far as what they get as they're reading through the scripture. And uh, remember, it is finished. <laughs>